Praise the Lord, dear friend, Thomas Manton IV, coming to you live with some words from heaven, from the big boss. Um, I've been in the flow of this series on obedience. I want to do it in, th in three parts. I did part one, day before yesterday, part two, yesterday, part three, today. And then I will finish this to, in this session right now in the next few moments. And then we will move on tomorrow into something even different and very powerful. Obedience causes you to thank you, Lord, for your, your anointing. Thank you, Lord, for your outpouring. To speak as your oracle, to speak as your prophet, to speak as your teacher, mentor, and coach to many people on the earth. I'm happy about it. I am a prophet to the nations. I'm a follower of Jesus. The Lord Jesus appeared to me and gave me this commission. And I'm ordained and called and anointed by him. And it's been a glorious journey walking in this realm, I'm telling you. So, obedience simply is doing what God wants you to do. When and where and how and why and with who and what. It is you're supposed to be doing, and you're doing it in obedience to Him. And when you do that, you bring a protection on your life. You bring a barrier and a hedge of glory over your life. That's one of the things about the prophetic word. Your obedience becomes prophetic in nature because prophetic is supernatural. Something above the natural. Supernatural word, supernatural fire, supernatural glory. Supernatural ingredients and manifestation of, um, um, you know, the workings of things that create miraculous and supernatural things in the natural world. It's worth it, even though there's warfare. It's worth it, even though it's going to cost you to curtail yourself and be very self-disciplined and all of that. Even the motivational teachers will tell you that. You won't have great success without being disciplined. So, in God, is even better because he gives you a special grace. You know, the devil's not merciful to anyone. <laughs> the devil doesn't care about you, just like some politicians don't care. Hello, I had to say that. Certain people don't care about people's lives at all. But, and the devil certainly doesn't. He's the author of all of that. Beyond everything that's going on and behind everything that's going on is the devil. You, you should know that, but I I'm, I'm just want to remind you of that. So, but God is different. He gives you grace. He gives you favor. He gives you power. He gives you help to get the thing done. He'll give you a good name. He'll give you power to produce kingdom exploits. He'll give you the best dividends and benefits. I wrote a whole chapter on this in this great book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. And I'm going to be making this into an ebook soon. You could remind me that you'd like it. And it's for our partners. When you're sowing a seed into this anointing for our world mission, you can have it as my gift. So you're sowing into me into this anointing and grace, and I'm sowing the word into you. So, it's not a sales thing, it's a giving thing. Very different, because that produces exponential harvest results. <laughs> Sale is a one-time thing, and you just have to do so many to make some, but when, to make some good uh, proceeds, but when God comes to you with a, with a harvest and a blessing, whoa, it's multiplied. So, obedience will give you great benefits. Oh, yes. Abraham was obedient. Look what happened to him. He was made very rich in Genesis 13, too, the Bible says. Very rich from Ur of Chaldees, son of Terah, moon-worshipping people. His wife was domineering. He was a businessman. They were all frustrated. They were all messed up, worshipping the moon. How are you going to get out of that? In Chaldees, wherever that is, Ur of Chaldees, wherever that is. God told him, God thought so much of it, he told him to leave. <laughs> he 
God said, you can't, you can't flourish here, Abraham, Abram. You can't flourish here like I want to bless you. So you got to go to a different place. You, you, you got to go to the place where I've ordained. Now, he was obedient to do that. And he sojourned through the land looking for a city whose builder and maker was God, the scripture says in Hebrews, right? And God blessed them mightily. God will bless you mightily when you hear his voice and you begin to move to the place where he's ordained you to be. Is that amazing? So uh, I've, I've done it all over the world, and boy, the blessings I've seen. Ooh, Lord. You know, you can make more money serving God. i just tell you the truth. You and God together become a, a profitable business conglomerate where you can literally be building an empire. You know what I mean? In the world, nobody, no human will pay you like God will pay you. But obedience is a ticket to that. So if you get to a ticket to the program. So if you uh, get into that program that he has for you, you'll be blessed. You'll flourish financially. You'll flourish in every way. And you'll get his work done, which makes him very happy that he wants to smile. Blessings in favor upon you. Don't think obedience is a bad word. It just means, well, I have to sacrifice and deny the flesh. Yes. Of course, that's a big part of it. But so what? You please God and get into the spirit, and the anointing comes. I'm under the anointing. I'll tell you, it's nothing greater. I, nothing greater than being under the anointing. His anointing gets on you. Favor starts to come. He starts to pay you. He starts to bless you. What's wrong with that? Is that not worth it? It's worth it. Remember, uh, who was that? Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel. No. Yeah. Rachel, yeah. He, he, Jacob wanted Rachel. And Laban, yeah, Laban. Laban was the, the evil guy. Worked seven years. Didn't pay him enough. So work at, and he wanted the woman. Rachel, he, she was beautiful. Leah wasn't. That's what he thought. Probably probably was the case. If you, if you looked at the photographs, you'd probably agree. <laughs> So anyway, if there were there, there were no photographs from then anyway, it was too far ago, too far back. But uh, before cameras were invented, but <sighs> cameras are so good now, I could just turn this thing on and have an internet box out here, and you know, have I'm on Wi-Fi right now, outside through technology, and I could speak to you from anywhere in the planet as long as there's a cellular network. Isn't that glorious? So he wanted her, so so Laban says, work for me another seven years. And then you could have her. So he was evil, but guess what? In the midst of the next seven years, in the midst of the second cycle, God gave Jacob an idea through a, like a prophetic vision and showed him how to uh, carve markings and patterns in the, in the, in the, in the, the bark of trees and stems, stalks, whatever things. And then when the anim animals copulated, what they, he made them, pointed them in directions to look at that. And, and the images they were seeing got in through the eye gate and got stamped in the DNA and came out in the offspring. That's the most brilliant, that's one of the most brilliant entrepreneurial uh, I ideas that has ever happened in the history of mankind. And Jacob probably was obedient all the way. God showed him the vision. He did it this way. He made them look at that. He made sure he was there and watched it all happen, not knowing the result, but God knew already. So he had to be flowing in supernatural obedience. Hello? And then look at the result. God didn't like abuse him like Laban did. He made him work more for nothing or little. He blessed him big. And then he had, he had now, now he had a commodity that sold more than Laban's cattle and livestock. And, <laughs> and he made more money than his master. And now he became the rich one. Was it okay to be obedient? And he got the woman after a while too, didn't he? It's like the end of the movies, you know, and you get the girl too. Ha, ha, ha. Whatever. So did David, but she, the woman he got was Saul's daughter. She was no good. Mikal. 
I can't call her Michael, like some Michael in America. Hello. Some of you will get that later. But uh, I can't call her Michael because she's a woman. Michael is a man's name. Mm, that's You get it? Some of you will get that. And not a woman's name. Michelle. Mikal, I like to say. But she was ugly. Maybe she was nice looking on the outside, but she was ugly in the heart. She's the one that mocked David when he was dancing before the Lord. And the Lord thought so much of her doing that that he struck her womb barren. So she was disobedient, rebellious, and disrespectful. And she got uh, judged by that. But David got all the more wealth and more glory from God because he was dancing and worshiping God. Nobody can mock you when you're walking with God and get away with it. Hello. So obedience produces miracles. You understand that? This is so good, I might go volume four. I just feel like, I don't know, because I'm feeling the anointing. I'm just saying all these things. I wanted to go through point by point, and I still have another uh, 10, 20, 30, 34, maybe 40 more points. So let me, let, me, let me continue this again tomorrow. Oh, this is good. And in the realm of the Spirit, Jesus, where Jesus came from, we need to go to. I wanted to mention this. I said I would mention this today, and I will. I follow my word. And I follow God's word, but when I say something, I'm going to do it. Matthew 17, Jesus was transfigured on the mountain, on the mount. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as the light. And he was then there, Moses and Elijah showed up. And Peter looked at all this and said, huh, what is this? And the bright cloud overshadowed them. The glory came over them. And he had to say to them, Jesus touched them. They fell on their faces as, as afraid, the other disciples. And Jesus came and touched them, put his hand on them and said, Now get up, arise, and do not be afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. So Elijah and Moses came in the spirit. But this was the real world for Jesus. Now obedience in your flesh. Listen to God's prophet here. Obedience in your flesh. When you make yourself be obedient in your life. Hello. You will bring the glory of God upon you and you can now enter the glory world where is where your real home is as a spiritual being. But if you stay in the flesh, disobedient, always tempted, always messed up, always wrong, with the wrong environment, the wrong people, you don't have, I, you could see the presence of God upon me when you're looking at me. I believe you can. I am under the anointing. My face is shining. I am shining. My eyes are bright. You see me. I am in the glory because I'm by myself in prayer with all my Bibles and materials and books here and meditating to bring the word to people in, obe in obedience to what the Lord told me to teach and preach. He wants me to do it every day and I'm doing it every day. Sometimes I say, oh my. I'm busy too, doing other things. No, I have to take time. And I like this time frame right now. So look for me every day around this same time. Look for me every day. Every day. Maybe may, seven days a week, unless I'm on a plane somewhere and I can't. I can't um, have the net on. But every day I'm on the ground with a good cellular, cellular network, I'm going to be doing it. And I like this time of day. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's going like 6 p.m. ish, our time zone, wherever you are. So this time of day in this hour, maybe a little earlier. I'd like to start a little earlier sometimes. And at least this would be the latest I would come on. Around 6 p.m. our time here. Not a long message. Within 30 minutes, I'm doing this. Day before yesterday was 22 minutes. Yesterday was 41 minutes because I was in a flow and I had a little more time. I, I'd started a little earlier. So it's going to be like a 30-minute thing every day. And I'm feeding your spirit. I'm teaching you something. I'm taking you somewhere. The life of obedience and the laws of obedience. My God, they work for your benefit and for the benefit of everybody that you'll come in contact with. You'll be a blessing to many and God will empower you to be blessed so you could be a blessing like Abraham was. Woo, Lord. Genesis 12, 1. I'm saying this from memory. God told Abraham to get up and get out.
from his father's house and go to the land where God will show him. Skip over to, he said, and he said in verse 4, 2 and 3, he said some, a few things. And he said, uh, verse 4, uh, whoever blesses you, I'll bless you. Whoever curses you, I'll, cur I'll curse. You know, people curse at me, even online, they try. And I see it and I pray. Or even if I don't see it, God sees it. Sometimes the more you don't see, the better. You know, Facebook, you know, there'll be a comment, like in a post. And someone wrote the most railing, nasty thing. Who are you to do that? God will strike you. You're touching, you're, you're firing at the anointed, and God will fire back. You know, it'll bounce off with more velocity and hit you back, and you won't even know what happened. People's lives are destroyed that way. And I don't know what it is with people that say they're Christians and preachers and they do things like that. Wow, it's bad. Do you see me come on here? I, I, I say things that are right. When something's dead and not good, I can comment on that. And I have, and I can be a bit opinionated about it. And say it pretty strongly because I, I really believe what I'm saying. That some people just are really wasting people's time. And it's sad that they're so boring when they're supposed to be a shining light. But I'm just, more, more than anything, I'm glad that I am. But I'm not going to rail at somebody personally and tell them anything. No, that's not right. Stop doing that. By the way, this is the Holy Ghost. If you're gossiping against somebody, you're critical of me or anybody, or you, someone that's anointed, you better stop it. Leave us alone. Because you're putting your finger in the electric socket and you'll be shocked and electrocuted. You're putting your hand in the fire and you're going to get cooked. Because God made, you know why? Because God made a covenant. <laughs> He said, um, who blesses you, I'll bless. Now, now, let me talk about the blessing. And who curses you, I'll curse. I, I've just explained it. I, wanna, I don't want to take any more time on that. I've said it. Now, and I'm Thomas Manthon IV, and I approve this message. And so does Jesus, and does, so does the Holy Spirit, because he's the one leading me to say all this. Now, uh, the blessing that comes by being connected. I was on the phone with someone last night in America. And uh, they, they told me, I'm sowing into your ministry and I'm getting so blessed. I said, yeah, that's what happens. People that connect with the anointing here, they get rich. I have so many testimonies, I can't even tell you. I hope to God, I'll, I said I would try to testify a bit and I'll try to do that tomorrow. I hope I can come on a bit earlier so I have a bit more time because I need to have a little testimony time. Is today, tomorrow's Friday. So people like to do testimonies on Tuesday because it seems like TT. Maybe I'll do testimonies on Friday. Well, I'll, I'll try to do it tomorrow. And maybe it'll become a habitual thing. I don't know. The Lord knows. But in Deuteronomy 8.1, he said, eh, I wrote this, Obey his voice and you'll receive his blessings. Every commandment which I command you, be careful to observe it. That you'll live and multiply and possess the land. Woo! Which the Lord swore already. Deuteronomy 28 1. It'll come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above the nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth. Isn't that something? You think that's just a region? No, he'll put you on high above everywhere. Even where the penguins are, down in Antarctica. It's too cold to go there. Nobody to preach to. Wouldn't know what language to speak to the penguins in. But, uh, <laughs> so we're not going to that one. But Australia, all the way back around all the six inhabited continents. Minus the seventh continent, which is uninhabited. It's only glaciers, ice and snow and penguins and polar bears. And What are you going to do with that? You'd only find people that are crazy in the outpost station. You ever think about those people that go to those places and go to live there and they're in a controlled environment where it's like 50 below zero, can go to 70 below zero. It's not possible to sustain human life in that temperature and they're in this thing. What if all the electric blew? What if there was some disaster and you didn't have a helicopter sitting right next to your thing fueled up that wasn't frozen? Even the helicopter's engine, even the fuel lines would freeze. 
So what if you were just stuck there? And the next thing you know, you, you can't get out of there. Let me give you a funny analogy about that. It's not a bad movie. There's no gore and guts and blood and cussing in it, I don't think. No, it's a, it's a straight, pretty straightforward movie, but it's a bit... It's a bit oh. My friend really wanted... I, I was visiting someone in Chicago, and my friend really wanted to see it. So we went, him and I went together to see it. His wife stayed home and with the dogs and the animals, and she was doing some work. She's a lawyer. She was doing some typing, studying doc, documents or whatever. So she felt a little pressed about that. So I said, okay, me, we'll, me and, we'll, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. He, uh, let's go see this. The movie called The Martian. I don't know if it was Matt Damon was the head character, who it was. Maybe it was him. Or Wahlberg. I think it was one of those two guys. Matt Damon, probably. The Martian. He got stuck. Uh, they went the wrong way. Well, he got left behind when the ship took off. And he stayed in the other... He was stuck there for months. Couldn't take a shower. There was no water for seven months. And he had his skin was all... And he had to figure out what to eat in a very creative way. It was bad. <laughs> so you don't want to get stuck in a place where there's no, you know... Escape hatch. I, I personally like the cities with a lot of malls, not even just one mall, but many. The more the merrier. You can pick which one you go to, and they have nice cappuccino and restaurants, and you know, you elegant, you can enjoy it. I like the creature comforts of the human experience to be the best. Good vehicles, good clothes, good house, good comfort, good people. Hello, God made it all for us. But your obedient life will bring you favor. You'll shake your head when you see people on the street, especially in third world countries. You see people that are oh, so bad. They're so messed up. Oh, I don't want to describe adjective with adjectives how all the things that are. And you wonder, like, they're here, but I'm here. And I'm blessed and I have everything. They there and they have nothing. I don't see they came they came they came up in the wrong environment. They're in the wrong environment. Nobody taught them. Nobody's helping them get out of where they are. It's very sad. But we have to but I also my mind goes immediately to God who favored me and who favors us because we're obedient and gives us all beautiful things. Freely we receive and enjoy all good things because of our obedience. So, I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. I love you very much, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, to help you. And as you're helping me in the ministry, sowing into the great world mission here, I want to send you an ebook of your choice, either the laws, the benefits of excellence or the laws of success, whichever one you would like. Uh, keys, diamond keys for your success and prosperity. These are very rich teachings in here that you can't find anywhere. And uh, my gift to our partners for sowing a seed, the Lord had me talk about this $77 seed. And the visitation I had, I want to say it again, you can do that in Kenya shillings, that would be $7,700, which makes $77 in euros, uh, pounds, you could just do it that way, or whatever the equivalent of US dollars is in your currency. Now, God may speak to you a different amount and say, well, I, I want you to do something else your tithe your seed it could be large could be whatever the lord tells you to do you do it and remind me on whatsapp especially or by email or on my website thomasmanton.com and i will send you the book of your choice father thank you for the grace and favor that comes from obedience and we love you that you lead us and direct us and that you cause us to work for you and do the things you want and not do the things that you don't want us to do. And we keep on the straight and narrow. Remember talk, the scripture talked about narrow is the road that leads to life. But few find it. But I'm so, we're so privileged that we find it. And walk on that good road. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord says, I'm not just going to leave you alone in that. I'm going to bless you. And Father, thank you that this is the greatest day and hour for our pro productivity to advance your work and to build your kingdom all over the world by the outpouring of your spirit. Save souls, 
bring people to you. If you don't know Jesus yet as your Savior, say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as, your, as my Savior, my Lord and my King right now. I repent of all my life before I've had this time, and I for, forgive me, Lord, for all of that. You can say that to the Lord, and he'll hear you and receive you, and you receive his gift of eternal life. And death is passed away, and new life comes. The curses go, they're broken, and the Holy Spirit brings you into a new situation of his blessings, and not only for here and now, but forever and ever. It's the best gift that you can receive. Receive him today. I also wrote a salvation prayer in my book here. It's uh, about three pages long and explains the whole plan of salvation and has the salvation prayer and all of that here. It's in the book. I want to do so much more of that. I want to make just a salvation book. I want to make the gospel tracks. I want to make the gospel script. I want to have all of those to give to people and have our teams of people and friends and pastors and ministers that you're around, business people, wherever you, you're meeting people, you can give that to them. You can lead people to the Lord. And we're building a whole department on that. We've done that to a degree, but I see it going to an entirely greater level. And I want to see people saved by the millions, as many as could happen, because that's the greatest thing that could happen. Especially now that we've entered into these crazy days, you better know that you have a good future with the Lord. That's the only place you'll want to be. You don't want to be in the other place with the other people. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for a wave of your outpouring to bring people to you in Jesus' name. And obedience to his plan causes us to be successful. It's the master key of success. I love you much, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow around the same time. I love you and I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. Thomas Manton IV. My website is thomasmanton.com and the other ways to give and sow and communicate with me directly or ought will be on the heading of this post and in the comments. Please do share this message with other people. Click the share button and share it with everyone in Jesus' name. Twanani Kesho, which means in Swahili, see you tomorrow. And I will see you tomorrow. Love you much. In Jesus' name. Amen.